You may be wondering, why does he always wear some weird guff on his head? I don't know. I just do. What's good everyone on YouTube? It's me again, back with another video. And if it seems like I'm downsizing, like, the shoes I own, and I just seem to be selling a lot of my shoes, you'd be right. Um, the reason I'm filming this is because another shoe has just recently sold, so we are trying to get a video out, and I say we because this is actually my younger brother's shoe. Um, we are just trying to get a film, a uh, video out of this shoe before we say goodbye to it and never see it again. And to be honest, this is going to be a hard one to let go because I've literally never seen this shoe in Australia. And it's probably due to the fact that never had an official release here and it was a women's shoe as well. So, as we all know, LeBron James is a very well-known basketball player. Even I know who he is and I don't even follow basketball. Um, I won't pretend I know too much about any of this. Uh, I don't follow the sport. I don't really know who he is. And I'm not too sure about the whole HFR sort of movement, the Harlem Fashion Row um, brand per se. So I'm not going to give any history lessons, I'm just going to talk about the details of the shoe. So, without further ado, we've actually got the women's LeBron 16 Limited in the HFR collaboration. And with the intro out of the way, let's just get into the box. And we're going to have a very long video because there is a lot of details to go over with this uh, entire package. Um, it really is quite the experience. So as we can just start off, we've got this golden box. Um, and the, I can't stress enough how shiny this box actually is. And along the top, we've got LeBron's sort of signature crown logo. We've actually got his, um, I guess they call it the Dunkman logo. Um, embossed on the top. Um, is it embossed or deep? No, it's embossed. And actually, on his uh, shin, it says a witness. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. But really nice uh, logo on the top. Then we've got LeBron 16 in uh, gloss text. Then we've actually got the LeBron Lionhead logo in gloss text. The Nike swoosh in gloss text. And LeBron's, I think this is LeBron's signature on the side as well. So a lot of gloss text, a lot of like details and a really shiny sort of box. Only downside is because it's so shiny, creases are very obvious. But overall this box was in quite good condition. And getting into opening the box, we're actually greeted with a sticker that says HFR and the LeBron logo. And this is the first layer of paper, which actually has this sort of wax finish to it, which gives it a more premium feel. Then we've actually just got the standard Nike paper that we, they would use in most of their shoes. And the shoes were stuffed with these really long um, shoe trees. I assume it's this long so that you can actually reach in and grab it because the LeBron 16 is a bit of a high, high top shoe. And I'm going to set the box to the side for now because there are actually two little bags in the shoe in the shoe box itself, and I'll pull them out individually so we can talk about them. So to start off, we've actually just got this almost like it almost feels like felt, but this really nice sort of dust bag. It's got these golden aglets at the tip and a waxed style um, lace per se. Really nice, really high quality. And on the front, we've got the HFR and the LeBron logo in this gold foil text. They've really killed this shoe when it comes to the packaging. Um, it really is quite the experience. And then along with the bigger dust bag, we've got this tiny dust bag, which comes with uh, very interesting accessories. It actually comes with two extra um, leather bands and we've actually got leather, um, not leather, we've got this metal sort of gold buckle and it's got this sheet of plastic because it's still brand new so don't want to get that all scratched up. And from what I heard you can actually wear these as wristbands as well. Um, you'll see later in the shoe these actually can be replaced on the shoe so you can use different colours. So this is like a light bone colour and really nice cut of leather, heavy piece of metal 
really feels premium. And yeah, on the bag it's, again, same details. It's basically a scaled down version of the first bag we looked at. So, in terms of details and packaging and everything, absolutely killed it. Um, I wish I knew more about this shoe. I feel, I feel like I'm a bit of like a culture vulture in this sense. You know, buying something without really understanding it fully. But you know, sometimes a shoe is just a shoe. And if you like what, it, what, what it's including, just go for it. So, with all that out of the way, if we look at the label, it reads Women's LeBron 16 Limited. Um, and I believe it's limited because this was not easy to get. So, how did we get this shoe and how much did it cost? So, my younger brother actually managed to cop this shoe off SNS on a random drop and he paid 249 USD for this shoe. I'll put the uh, conversion here, but roughly I think it was something around like 330 Australian dollars. And for the, for the price, even at 250 USD, the packaging and the shoe itself is absolutely amazing. I think it's um, beautiful, I say. Only thing is, I will mention the size of this shoe is a men's eight and a half or a women's ten, and on the SNS website, that's a, that was the biggest size they had available. So unfortunately, I can't actually put this shoe on, and neither can my younger brother. But we can still just talk about the shoe itself. So with the box out of the way, let's just get into the shoes. And here we are. Oh my goodness. The uh, Women's LeBron 16 Limited in the HFR collaboration. So, um, oh geez, I don't even know where to start with this shoe. Um, I guess it'd be probably best to start from the top because that's where one of the biggest changes have actually happened. So if we know what a LeBron 16 looks like, the regular version, you kind of know the general construction of this shoe. But there have been some lux touches and upgrades that just make this shoe feel so much more premium and so much more fashionable per se. So along the top, they've actually put holes in the tongue where you can loop a leather band through the entire um, tongue and then around the back. And it comes stock with these sort of clay colored um, leather bands and you still got the gold buckle at the front. And it looks amazing. I have never seen something that looks this luxe and this fashion forward. Um, really beautiful and I wish this was more available to like the men's sizes. Um, even though this is close to a men's size, um, I think size 11s, like women's 11s were ridiculously hard to come across. Um, so we've got the leather band on the top. And another big change they've made is to the lacing system. So the tongue construction is still the same, where you've got this sort of folded over tongue, but unlike the regular LeBron 16s where the laces go over the tongue, the laces in this case kind of run along the side of the tongue, almost like really oversized stitching. So you've got these sort of flat ribbon laces. Well, actually, oh, let me amend that actually. The, the, there are no laces that run down this part of the shoe. It's actually an elastic that runs down the entire side of the shoe. So there is no laces here. However, at the top, we've actually got laces that originate from the back of the heel, wraps around the heel, and then comes around at the top of the tongue. So, and speaking of the heel, um, this is probably my favorite detail that I've seen on this shoe and probably many shoes to date. Um, this sort of like, almost like, I don't even know how they manufactured it. It could have been 3D printed or like injected molded, but we've actually got this Lionhead logo with the, oh, I don't even know what to say about this. This is just amazing. Um, you've got like the Lionhead logo and the laces actually go through the mouth and the mouth acts as a way to hold the laces in that cross configuration. And it just looks amazing. Um, I know it sounds like I'm gassing up this shoe a lot, and I really am. This is, oh, I'm so sad to see these go, actually. But moving sort of forward, we've got like the same sort of construction, this Battle Knit 2.0 that is used on LeBron shoes. Uh, Battle Knit is kind of this like iteration on Fly Knit that's supposed to be tougher because, I mean, if you're a basketball player, you put a lot of torque on your shoes. 
So you need something to hold your foot in place. And again, no no stone was left unturned because they actually, it, they upgraded the lace holes with these sort of gold um, uh, eyelets per se. And um, it just looks amazing. Uh, there, there, there's, not, there's not much I can say technically about this shoe because this isn't a shoe I've had. Uh, I've had the experience of wearing a lot, but just as someone who's owned the shoe and looked at the shoe many times, it's just a, it's a, it's an art piece at this point. And moving down on the shoe, we've actually got like a gold trim on the midsole, and then we've got a pretty standard, you know, setup. The uh, Zoom Air in combination with a bit of like Max Air in the back. And then if we move to the bottom, the last sort of luxe detail that was added. We've actually got a gold Dunkman logo, and you know, you can tell that I haven't worn this at all because the Dunkman is still shiny. If I had been wearing this, I think he'd be looking very disheveled by this point. So that's pretty much, I guess, the defining features of this shoe. There is just so much about this that has been upgraded and changed, and prob props to the team that designed this shoe, honestly. Now, quickly touching on cushioning, you've actually got a mixture of uh, Zoom Air units as well as a little bit of like Max Air in the back. So Zoom Air as we know is like the higher than compressed air with the fibers running through it and Max Air is just, you know, compressed air with like those foam pillars that run through it. And I assume the foam pillars were done in the heel because if you are of a heavier set weight, it will probably be a little better than using zoom units because zoom units can be a little bit too bouncy depending on how much you weigh. Now, in terms of sizing, I unfortunately, uh, this is not my size so I can't say much about this particular shoe. I will say however, I have tried on a LeBron 16 before and I, I would suggest going true to size in them. And this kind of looks about the same um, just a bit smaller just because obviously it's a size 8 and a half So I would just say I'd probably go true to size in this shoe now in terms of comfort I've only ever worn the LeBron 16s around in the in like Foot Locker because I never actually bought the shoe But I found the zoom air units were very responsive and you could really feel the cushioning underfoot and the battle knit was not too bad either um, it's a little stiff, uh, but that's kind of the intended purpose of it, and yeah, I, I would just say like, I would assume this would be quite a comfortable shoe, because aside from like the upgrades to like the uh, leather strap around the ankle and this sort of elastic lacing instead of regular laces, most of the shoe is pretty much the exact same construction, so if you guys already like how the LeBron 16 feels on feet, um, you, you should be in for a good time because this will be perfectly fine. Now we get into um, my opinions on this shoe and as you've probably already figured out there's not much for me to say. This is what I think truly shows how sneaker design can be an art form per se. There's just so many details to this and for the I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard people who aren't really into sneakers say that all sneakers look alike. They don't. Um, this is a great example of how details can really make a sneaker pop and how it, it can make a sneaker really elevate its style. And it is one of the best renditions I've ever seen of the LeBron 16. There's a reason I haven't bought the LeBron 16. First of all, I don't really like basketball. I don't know LeBron all that well. And personally, I just think the LeBron 16, it its standard form is just too performance heavy looking. Like, it's not something I could see people wearing every day, although I have seen people wear it lifestyle wise. I just don't think it looks that great. However, this is, this is something I could get on board with any day of the week. I will say it does lean a lot more on the feminine side, but that's probably because it is designed to be a woman's shoe. But I, if you were a very extra kind of guy, you could probably pull this off as well. Um, I haven't even seen fit pictures of this shoe, so it's kind of interesting. Like, I'd be really interested to see how people are styling this shoe. But honestly, this is a work of art in my opinion. And 
there's not much more I can say about it. I'm just gonna stop here and yeah. So we're at the end of another video. So I would actually love to hear what you guys think of this particular LeBron 16 in this HFR collaboration. And yeah, I don't have any specific questions this time. Just what do you think of this shoe? I just think it's a work of art and it's um, quite amazing how expensive this shoe has gotten over time. But th there's a reason why we're letting it go now. It's just not worth keeping it around anymore. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. And now time for, I guess, the on feet portion. What I'm probably gonna do is like try and stand, make it look like my foot's in the shoe. Or maybe not. Maybe there won't be any on feet portion. If there isn't, you'll see the end card. If there is, let's go.